Hey everyone, it's Professor Primpton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on transformations of functions. So in the previous video, we talked about how to graph functions using vertical and horizontal shifts, and also how to graph functions using reflections across the x-axis, y-axis, or even origin. In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine whether a function is even, odd, or neither from its graph, and also to graph functions using vertical and horizontal stretching and shrinking, and then construct a function using a combination of transformations. So let's pick up where we left off. This is vertical stretching and shrinking. Suppose that you know what the graph of y equals f of x looks like. How do you obtain the graph of y equals c times f of x, where c is a constant? Notice that each of the y coordinates of y equals c times f of x at the same x value will have the y value, or the y coordinate, of y equals f of x multiplied by the value of c. So it's the same y value as y equals f of x, but then you have to multiply the y value by c to get the graph of y equals c times f of x. If you're multiplying the y coordinates by a constant c, that will have the effect of vertical stretching the graph by a factor of c, whatever the number c is, if c is greater than 1, or it actually will be a vertical shrink of the graph by a factor of c if the number c is between 0 and 1. So let's take a look at the graphs and see what vertical stretch and vertical shrink will actually have an effect on the graph of y equals c times f of x. So if you start off with the graph of y equals f of x, the one that's graphed in blue again, if you want to graph the function y equals c times f of x, where c is greater than 1, that is what's called a vertical stretch by a factor of c. So you take all the y values on the graph of y equals f of x, and you multiply the y value by c. So if it crosses through the origin 0, 0, the y value is 0, multiply that by c, and it's still 0. So the graph of y equals c times f of x still passes through the origin 0, 0. But if you take this point and you take the y value and multiply by c, you actually get this point on the graph of y equals c times f of x. And that looks like the graph has been stretched away from the x-axis, even for this point. If you take the y value, it's a negative y value. If you multiply it by c, where c is greater than 1, then the y value becomes an even larger negative number. And so again, it looks like the graph is stretched away from the x-axis. And so that's called a vertical stretch by a factor of c. On the other hand, if your c is between 0 and 1, it's not called a vertical stretch, it's called a vertical shrink by a factor of c. And so if you start off the graph with y equals f of x, the one that's in blue, if you multiply all the y values by c, if c is less than 1, the y value is actually getting smaller. So if you take this y value and multiply by c, which is less than 1, you get this y value on the graph of y equals c times f of x. And so it looks like the graph has shrunk towards the x-axis. Even if the y value is negative, if you multiply by c, if c is less than 1, it actually will get smaller. It will just be a smaller negative number, and so you get closer to the x-axis. And so this is called a vertical shrink by a factor of c. It looks like the graph is shrinking towards the x-axis. So in example 4, we're going to find out what does the graph look like for vertical stretching and shrinking of graphs. Start with the graph of the basic function. Describe the transformations used to obtain the graph of y equals f of x. Then graph the function. So number one, g of x, we're going to graph this function using transformations where the function is negative 3x squared, subtract 2. So it looks like we're starting off with a basic function y equals x squared. So starting with the graph of y equals x squared, it looks like the graph of g of x, which is negative 3x squared, subtract 2, it looks like there's a reflection because you have a negative sign out in front of the x squared. It also is a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 because it's not just x squared, it's 3x squared. And so you're multiplying the y values by 3, and so c is a larger number than 1, it's 3, and so it's a stretch by a factor of positive 3, and it looks like the negative 2 will shift the graph down 2 units. So let's start with the graph of y equals x squared. That will be a parabola that crosses through the origin at 0, 0, it also passes through the point 1, 1, and also negative 1, 1. If we do a reflection across the x-axis, then 0, 0 will stay on the x-axis, 1, 1 becomes 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 1 becomes negative 1, negative 1 after reflection over the x-axis. If you take all the y values now and multiply by 3, this 1, negative 1 becomes 1, negative 3, and negative 1, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative 3. And 0, 0 stays at 0, 0 because multiplying the y coordinate by 3 is still 0 times 3 or 0. And then the last transformation is shift down 2, a vertical shift downward 2 units. So 0, 0 becomes 0, negative 2. 1, negative 3 becomes 1, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 3 becomes negative 1, negative 5. And so now you have a parabola for this graph of g of x, negative 3x squared subtract 2, that passes through 0, negative 2, 1, negative 5, and also negative 1, negative 5. 
And so the transformations are a vertical shift down two units, a reflection across the x-axis, and also a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Because we're multiplying the x squared term by three, the c value is three and it's larger than one, so it's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. So number two, let's graph the function h of x, which is one half times the square root of x plus four, the plus four is inside the square root, and then you have to subtract three outside the square root. So it looks like we're dealing with the basic function of y equals square root of x, and now we want to graph the function h of x using transformations. So notice if you want to graph the function h of x, which is one half square root x plus four, and then subtract three outside the square root, it looks like it's a vertical shrink by a factor of one half, because we're multiplying the square root function by one half which will shrink the graph towards the x-axis because the c is one-half, which is less than one. So it's a vertical shrink by a factor of one-half. It looks like it's a horizontal shift because it's not just square root of x, it's square root of x plus four, where the plus four is inside the square root. And so it's a horizontal shift. It's a plus four, so it's a shift left, four units. And also the minus three on the outside of the square root will be a vertical shift down three units. So let's start off with the graph of the square root function y equals square root of x. It will start at the point 0 comma 0. It'll pass through 1 comma 1 and 4 comma 2. Let's do the vertical shrink by a factor of 1 half first. So 0 comma 0, if you multiply the y value by 1 half, so 1 half times 0 is still 0. So the graph of the transformation after the vertical shrink will still start at 0 comma 0. 1 comma 1 will shrink towards 1 comma half, and 4 comma 2 will shrink to 4 comma 1 when you multiply all the y values by a half. And now, let's shift the graph to the left four units, a horizontal shift. And so 0 comma 0 becomes negative 4 comma 0. 1 comma half becomes negative 3 comma half. And 4 comma 1 becomes 0 comma 1 after the horizontal shift. And now, if you want a vertical shift downward three units, the negative 4 comma 0 will now be at negative 4, negative 3. So that's where the graph will start. Instead of negative 3 comma half, now it will be at negative 3, negative 2.5 after it's shifted down 3 units. And the point, which is at 0 comma 1, will now be shifted down 3 units. Now it will be at 0, negative 2. And so now you have a graph that will start at negative 4, negative 3. It will pass through negative 3 comma negative 2.5 and also pass the y-axis at 0 comma negative 2. And so this is the graph of h of x, which is 1 half times the square root of x plus 4, subtract 3. It's a vertical shrink by a factor of 1 half because we're multiplying the square root function by a half. We have a vertical shift downward three units because the minus three is outside the square root. And then you have a horizontal shift left four units because it's not just square root of x, it's square root of x plus four where the plus four is inside the square root. Okay, let's take a look at one more type of transformation of a graph. We have what's called horizontal stretching and shrinking. So we're going to know what the graph of y equals f of x looks like. How do you obtain the graph of y equals f of c times x? So notice that it's not just f of x, it's c times x as the input value. How is that related to the graph of y equals f of x? Well, the y-coordinate of y equals f of c times x at x is actually the same as the y-coordinate of y equals f of x at the value where the input value is c times x. So that means you need to take all the x-coordinates of y equals f of x. They correspond to x-coordinates of the graph of y equals f of c times x. So it looks like the input value has been multiplied by c to get c times x as the input. So looking at this the other way around, Notice that the x-coordinates in the graph of y equals f of c times x, those are the x-coordinates of y equals f of x, but they've been multiplied by 1 divided by c. So if you want the x-coordinate of the function f of c times x, you need to multiply the input value by 1 divided by c to get back to y equals f of x. And so that means that the graph will actually be a horizontal shrink to get the y equals f of c times x graph by a factor of 1 divided by c if c is greater than 1. So it's a shrink this time if c is greater than 1. However, if the c value is between 0 and 1, it's called a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by c. So now let's look at what happens with the graph whenever c is larger than 1 or c is less than 1 or, and also greater than 0. So if you have c greater than 1, that's called a horizontal shrink or a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 divided by c. So if you start off with the graph of y equals f of x, the one that's in blue, and you want to graph the function y equals f of c times x, where c is larger than 1, it's going to shrink the graph towards the y-axis this time. So you take all the x-coordinates, and you multiply by 1 divided by c. And so this point that's on the x-axis, if you take the x-coordinate and multiply by 1 over c, it gets closer to the y-axis. And so you'll have a point that's still on the x-axis, but the point will be closer to the y-axis.
and you do the same thing on the other side of the y-axis, all the points that are on the left side of the y-axis will shrink towards the y-axis. So this is called a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 divided by c, because the x-coordinates are being multiplied by 1 divided by c. And it's a shrink because the c is larger than 1. On the other hand, if the c is between 0 and 1, then it's called a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by c. And so if you take the graph of y equals f of x, the one that's in blue again, and you take all the x-coordinates and you multiply by 1 divided by c, if c is less than 1, multiply by 1 divided by c will actually make the x values even larger. So this point that's on the graph of y equals f of x will actually be multiplied by 1 divided by c, it will actually get larger x-coordinate. So the graph looks like it stretches away from the y-axis on both ends of the graph. If you have a graph that's on the left side of the y-axis and you multiply by 1 divided by c, where c is less than 1, it will be a larger negative number. And so it looks like the graph is stretched, again, away from the y-axis. And so this is called a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 divided by c. Example 5, we're going to look at horizontal stretching and shrinking of graphs. So starting with the graph of the basic function again, describe the transformations used to obtain the graph of f of x, and then graph the function. So number one, we're going to graph the function g of x using transformations, which is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of one-third x, and one-third x is inside the absolute value. So it looks like we're starting off with a basic function, which is y equals absolute value of x. Notice that we have a negative on the outside of the absolute value function, so it looks like we're going to have a reflection across the x-axis. And then you have not just x on the inside of the absolute value, you have one-third x as the input. And so it looks like it's going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of three because the reciprocal of one-third is three. Remember that a horizontal stretch or horizontal shrink is by a factor of one divided by c. It looks like the number c in this case is one-third. So one divided by one-third is really three. So that's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three because the c, which is one-third, is less than one. It's a stretch. So let's start off with the graph of y equals absolute value of x. We know that the vertex at 0, 0, and the absolute value of x will pass through 1, 1, 2, 2, and so on, and also negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and so on. So it's going to form this V-shaped graph of the absolute value of x. Now let's see what happens if you have a reflection across the x-axis because the negative on the outside of the absolute value. So 0, 0 reflected across the x-axis will stay at 0, 0. 1, 1 reflected will be at 1, negative 1, and negative 1, 1 reflected will be at negative 1, negative 1. And now let's talk about this horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. Because c is less than 1, it's a stretch. It's going to stretch the graph away from the y-axis. And so this point, which was at 1, negative 1, is now going to be a stretch to be 3, negative 1. And negative 1, negative 1 is now going to be stretched to be negative 3, negative 1. And 0, 0 is right on the y-axis, so stretch will have no effect on it. And so the graph of g of x, which is negative, the absolute value of one-third x, where one-third x is inside the absolute value, will look like this. It'll have a vertex at zero, zero still. It'll pass through the point negative three, negative one, and also three comma negative one. It'll be a reflection across the x-axis because the negative outside the absolute value. And it'll also be a horizontal stretch by a factor of three because the input is now one-third times x instead of just x. The c is one-third, that's less than one, so it's a stretch, and the reciprocal of one-third is three. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. And then number 2, let's graph the function h of x, which is the square root of 4 times x, where 4x is inside the square root, using transformations. So let's start off with the graph of y equals square root of x again, because that's the basic function that we're talking about. Instead of an x inside the square root, now it's a 4 times x to get the graph of h of x. And so c, if you notice, is 4. That's larger than 1, so this time it's going to be a horizontal shrink by a factor of, if c is 4, It'll be a shrink by a factor of 1 divided by 4. So let's start off with the graph of y equals square root of x. That graph starts at 0, 0. It passes through 1, 1, 4, 2, and so on. So now if you take the x coordinates and you multiply by 1 fourth, that will shrink the graph towards the y axis. So 0, 0 is right on the y axis, so it stays 0, 0. But then the point 1, 1, if you multiply the x coordinate by 1 fourth, that 1, 1 will now be at 1 fourth, 1, or 0 0.25, 1. And if you have the point 4, 2, and you multiply the x-coordinate by 1 fourth, then the point becomes 1, 2. And so the graph of h of x, which is square root of 4 times x, will actually pass through the point 0, 0. That's where the graph will start. It'll pass through 0, 0.25, 1, and also 1, 2, and the graph will go up as you go to the right. So it looks like the graph has been shrunk towards the y-axis, and that's a shrink horizontally by a factor of 1 fourth to get the graph of h of x, which is the square root of 4 times x.
So let's finish up this video talking about what's called even and odd functions. A function that satisfies this property that f of negative x is equal to f of x for every x value in its domain, then the function is called an even function. So in other words, if you're taking the x value and you replace all the x's with a negative x and you get the same y value in either case, then the function is called an even function. So for example, this function f of x, which is the opposite of 2 times x to the fourth plus 3, that's an even function because if you take all the x's as inputs and replace them with negative x, then you simplify the function negative 2 times x has to be replaced with negative x to the fourth plus 3. Well, that would be negative 2. Negative x to the fourth power is negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x. That's positive x to the fourth. And so negative 2 times x to the fourth will give you negative 2x to the fourth, and then the plus 3 just stays the same. And so this is negative 2x to the fourth plus 3. That's exactly the same function that we started off with. And so f of negative x, replacing all the x's with negative x, produces the same function as the original function. So that function f of x is called an even function. The y values stay the same when you change x coordinates to the negative x coordinate. So what does that mean in terms of symmetry with a graph? The function f of x is an even function if and only if the graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So if you take all the points that are positive x values and you have the same y value if you replace all the x's with a negative x value, then the graph will be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. On the other hand, if a function satisfies this property, f of negative x is the opposite of f of x for every x value that's in the domain, that function is called an odd function. So for example, if the function f of x is negative 3 times x cubed plus 4x, that's an odd function because if you take all the x's again and you, and you replace them with a negative x, f of negative x would be negative 3 times negative x cubed plus 4 times negative x, and if you simplify, you'll have negative 3 times negative x to the third power is negative x times negative x times negative x, that's negative x cubed, and so negative 3 times negative x cubed will give you positive 3x cubed, and the other term is 4 times negative x, that's negative 4x. So notice that it is the opposite of the original function. Instead of negative 3x cubed, it's positive 3x cubed. Instead of positive 4x, it's negative 4x. And so that is completely the opposite of the original function. And so the y values have changed sign. So you replace the x values with a negative x value, and the y values become also the opposite sign. That's called an odd function. And so what does this mean in terms of the graph? A function f of x is an odd function if and only if its graph is symmetric with respect to the origin. So what type of symmetry does this mean? This is equivalent to rotating the graph an angle of 180 degrees, or a half turn, about the origin. So again, the definition of even and odd functions. The function f of x is an even function if the function satisfies this property. f of negative x is equal to f of x for all x values in the domain of f of x. The right side of the equation of an even function does not change if x is replaced with negative x. On the other hand, a function is an odd function if it satisfies this property. f of negative x is the opposite of f of x for all the x values in the domain of the function f of x. The right side of the equation is the opposite of the original function whenever x is replaced with negative x. So an even function will have this type of symmetry. It will be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So if you take an x value, it will give you a y value on the graph of y equals f of x. If you change the sign of the x coordinate to get negative x, it still gives you the same y coordinate. And so if you do that for every single point on the graph of the function, you'll have a graph that's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, where the y-axis is like the symmetry line for your graph. And then a function that is symmetric with respect to the origin is an odd function. So you take all the x coordinates that are on the graph of f of x, so x comma y, if you change the x coordinate to a negative x coordinate, and then the y coordinate will also change to the negative y coordinate. So this is what symmetric with respect to the origin looks like. You have a point x comma y, that means that negative x comma negative y is also a point on the graph of y equals f of x. And that happens for every single point on the graph of the function then the graph will be symmetric with respect to the origin. It looks like the graph is a rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. A function that is neither even nor odd, so a function that is not symmetric with respect to the y-axis, and a function that's not symmetric with respect to the origin, that's neither even nor odd. That is a possibility. If a function is even, it must satisfy this property. A function that's odd must satisfy this property. And if it doesn't satisfy either one, it's neither, even nor odd. So example six, even and odd functions, we're going to determine whether each of the following functions are even, odd, or neither even nor odd using an algebraic method, using this definition of even and odd functions. So number one, 
the function is f of x equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1. So whether we're going to test it, whether it's an even function or odd function, notice the definition says we replace all the x's with the negative x. So let's do that. Replace each x with a negative x, and then we'll simplify the function afterwards. So f of negative x means you take all the x's and replace them with an input of negative x. So it would be 3 times negative x in parentheses cubed, plus 2 times negative x in parentheses squared, and then plus 1. So negative x cubed is the opposite of x cubed. So 3 times the opposite of x cubed plus 2 times negative x squared is positive x squared. So you'll have 2 times x squared, and then the plus 1 just stays the same. So 3 times negative x cubed becomes negative 3x cubed, plus 2x squared becomes plus 2x squared, and then plus 1. So notice that this function, the first terms change a sign, but the other two terms do not change sign. So it's not the same function as we originally started off with, so it's not an even function, but it's also not the opposite of the original function, because the first term changes sign, but the other two do not. So it's not an odd function either. So this is neither even nor odd. It does not have y-axis symmetry, and the graph does not have origin symmetry either. Okay, number two. This time we're going to look at the function g of x, which is equal to x to the fourth, subtract 3x squared plus pi. So if we're going to test whether it's an even function or an odd function, we do the same thing. Replace each x with a negative x in the function, and then simplify. So you'll have g of negative x, so take all the x's and replace them with a negative x in parentheses. You'll have negative x in parentheses to the fourth, minus 3 times x is replaced with negative x in parentheses, and that's being squared, and then plus pi. So now simplify. Negative x in parentheses to the fourth is positive x to the fourth, because you have four negatives multiplied together, that's positive, minus three times positive x squared, because again, negative x times negative x is positive x squared, and then plus pi stays the same. So we'll have x to the fourth minus three x squared plus pi. Notice that we have g of negative x is this answer. Well, that's the original function we started off with. So g of negative x is the original function g of x. This means g of x is an even function. And so its graph will be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Number three, h of x is the function 1 subtract the cube root of x. So again, even or odd functions, we replace each x with negative x in the function and then simplify. So we'll have h of negative x is 1 subtract the cube root instead of an x, will be cube root of negative x. And now we need to simplify. So notice that there's a property involving radicals or roots. It'll be cube root of negative 1 times x on the inside of the root. And so you can take the cube root of each factor separately. You'll have 1 subtract the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of x. The cube root of negative 1 we know is negative 1. And so you'll have 1 subtract negative 1 times the cube root of x. And that makes it 1 plus cube root of x. So again, notice that this is not the original function we started off with. The first term is still positive 1, but the second term is the opposite sign. It's plus cube root of x, and the original function was minus cube root of x. So it's not an even function because it's not the original function we start off with, but it's also not an odd function because it's not the opposite sign of the original function h of x. So this function is neither even nor odd, so that means that the graph does not have y-axis symmetry for the function h of x, and it also doesn't have symmetry with respect to the origin either. Okay, number four k of x is the function the opposite of x plus 3 divided by x. So again, test even or odd functions, replace each x with the negative x in the function, and then simplify. So we'll have k of negative x, so it will be opposite of negative x after you replace the x with the negative x, plus 3 divided by x becomes 3 divided by negative x. Well, the opposite of negative x is positive x. 3 divided by negative x is the second term, and so now this negative sign from the denominator can be pulled out to the front to make it a coefficient, so it's positive x subtract 3 divided by x. And so notice that this is the opposite sign of the original function. k of negative x became positive x for the first term, minus 3 divided by x for the second term. Well, the first term was negative x, and the second term was 3 divided by x. So the first term changed sign, and also the second term changed sign. So that's the opposite of the original function. So it's the opposite of k of x. And so this means k of x is an odd function. Its graph will be symmetric with respect to the origin. So keep in mind, as you checked whether functions are even or odd using this algebraic method, there's also a graphical method. If you want to check your answers, if you examine the graph of the function that we had in the previous example, if you have symmetry with respect to the y-axis, that means that the function must be an even function. And if the graph has symmetry with respect to the origin, if it looks like it's a 180 degree turn or half turn, that means the function must have been an odd function. And a function that does not have y-axis symmetry and a graph that does not have origin symmetry 
It's neither even nor an odd function. So this finishes our discussion on transformations of functions involving the vertical stretch or vertical shrink or horizontal stretch or horizontal shrink and also testing whether a function is even or odd and the types of symmetry that includes. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about combining functions.